Okay, so now it's time to host our static files in Amazon Web Services S3 buckets. And S3 buckets are just a static file storage system on Amazon Web Services that allow us to host and serve our static files like images directly from there rather than our Django project. So what I mean by that is if you have a project of this size and you just wanna upload this to a Heroku server or a server like that, in theory, you could just upload it and have your static files served like this. But once you start uploading more pictures, maybe you have users with profile pictures, you're gonna to wanna to serve these outside of Heroku. So Heroku wasn't built to serve static files. So it's best practices to actually host them elsewhere. So if you look at this image right here and you look at the URL path, it's actually not taking you to one of these, but if you read it right here, it's on bucket.s3.amazonaws.com and then the rest of the URL. So AWS is actually serving this image for us. So what we're gonna do in this video is configure that, create that S3 bucket, and then next time we upload a picture, so if I wanna upload a new profile picture, that'll actually be sent to AWS, and then that S3 bucket will actually serve it just like it's doing here. So it won't go in here. So we're just gonna configure images and any other static files that we may have. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is create an S3 bucket, and I'm gonna open up my settings.py file because this is where I am gonna handle all the configuration. So if I open up my browser, I actually just went ahead and um, took away all that configuration. So if you look at this, that image that was being served from the S3 bucket is no longer being served, but because we have this logo in within our static files, it's now back to that path. So once I configure the uh, S3 bucket and upload the image there, it'll change once that configuration is done. So let's go ahead and go to AWS. So just Google up AWS if you don't have an account yet and go ahead and create one. So aws.amazon.com and go ahead and put a card on file. It will require a card, but um, you, don't, you won't be charged anything until you actually go above a certain usage. So go ahead and just follow that and once you create the account, go ahead and sign in. And I'm gonna do a search for S3. So this is the tab that we want, but because you haven't been there yet probably, go ahead and just do a search, make it a easier find there. And let's go ahead and create that. So I'll make this full screen. And we're gonna create a bucket. So our bucket name needs to be unique. So I'm gonna call mine Dennis. And this might take a few tries if somebody already has the name that you want. So go ahead and test a few things out. I'm gonna call mine Dennis IV CRM one dash bucket. So make sure that's unique. And we're gonna go through the default configuration. So I'm gonna leave my region to US to West Oregon, leave it to whatever you need and go through next, next. And we'll just let all the defaults run. Okay, so our new buckets created. And what we need to do right now is run some kind of configuration that allows us different access types to our bucket. So within permissions, go to course configuration and we have a sample policy and this is basically restrictions we can set on it, um, different domains that may be allowed to use our bucket. But if you look at my source code, I'll actually leave this in the description in the YouTube video, go ahead and copy this and paste it in. So uh, just to summarize this, I left allowed origin, which is the domain that we're allowing. I left that to star, which means for now, just allow anything. But once you're looking to secure this, go ahead and study this a little bit more. So we're gonna set that and hit save. And now we need to create a user that can actually manage this bucket. So I have one created, but for this sake, I'm gonna create a new one. So let's go back to our main console and let's do a search for I am. So this is identity access management, I believe, user. Um, that's what it stands for. But from here, we're just gonna go to, yeah, identity access management. We're gonna go to users and we're gonna create a new user. So I'll just call this Dennis CRM. And this is the user's access that we need to actually control that bucket. So let's set the access type to programmatic, which means this user can make updates and actually access the full bucket. And we'll hit next. And in attachment policies, I believe, we're gonna wanna look for S3 and we're gonna do Amazon S3 full access. So this is gonna give the user all the permissions for now. So um, later on, you might wanna study what this does, but we're just gonna set it to that and give the user full access. And we don't need to do anything here. And now when we create our user, we're actually gonna to need to get the user's access key ID and secret key. So if I just go ahead and copy this and go back to 
uh, settings.py. So I know the right way is to actually set this up in environment variables, but I'll probably make another video for that. But it, for now, just don't share your code with anybody. Make sure they don't see your, your access key ID, seeker key or anything like that. So be very careful with this, but this is the way we're gonna set this up. So I grab that key and I set it to the variable of AWS access key ID. So go ahead and set that. And then the next one we're gonna need is gonna be that secret key. So we'll go back to our user and run one there and we'll get this secret key. So again, make sure this stuff is actually hidden. You never share it with anyone. So we'll copy this and AWS seeker access key. So go ahead and set that. So this is just giving us access to the user. And the last thing we need at this point is access to that bucket name. So let's go ahead and get that. So our bucket name, now that our user is created, we can go back and search S3, go back to our bucket. And the bucket name was Dennis IV CRM one dash bucket. So let's go ahead and grab this name and throw that into the bucket name. So our user permissions, our bucket name, and now we can access this bucket. So now we need to add a few more libraries to finish up this configuration. So we need to finish up this setup here. And this is uh, where I'm getting this is from Django storages. So that's a documentation that lets us know how to actually finish up this configuration. So let's go ahead and just look that up. So we're going to do a Google search for Django storages. And I'm going to open up these docs right here. And we need to run this pip install. And if you look through storages, we're going to select Amazon S3. And again, this just lets us work with the back end and actually set up those static files. But first, let's go ahead and run that pip install. So I'll turn off my server and we'll just do pip install Django dash storages. And storages also requires one more library. So if you read through this, we also need something called Bodo3. And I'll just drag in this into my browser. So this is Bodo3 and we need to run this pip install. So if you look through this description, Bodo3 is an Amazon Web Services software development kit for Python, which allows Python developers Long story short, to work with S3 buckets, I won't go into detail. So let's go ahead and just install that. So pip install Bodo3. And once we have those two installed, what we need to do now is actually include storages into our installed apps. So let's go ahead and before we finish up this, which is all from Django storages, let's go to installed apps and add that. So we'll just add that as storages and add a comma there. So that just lets us know that we're working with it. So it's not Django storages, it's just storages. And to finish up this configuration to show you where I actually get this, let's go ahead and just copy that and go into Django storages. And there's some minimal defaults that we need. So AWS S3 file overwrite, we're gonna set that to false. So the default is true. And what that means is that when we upload a new file, if there's a file with that same name, uh, do we want to overwrite that or do we want to um, just add it and give it a different name? So I'm going to set that to false because I don't want files to be overwritten. And we'll just set default ACL to none. So I won't go into too much detail, um, but this is the minimal defaults that you need for, at this point. So let's go ahead and set the file default storage too. So if I look this up, we'll pull this directly from right here. So this is going to be storages.backends.s3 boto3 storage. So we'll just paste that in as a string and we'll remove that. So this should get most of what we need set up. And there's a few things I want to take care of here. But if I go to my actual Django or uh, my S3 buckets here, let's go ahead and actually upload our files. So let's go into our project and I'll just move some of this here and let's go to our CRM project and go to static. I'm actually just going to grab all of this and upload it into my S3 bucket. So let's move that to the right here and let's just hit upload and I can just drag all of these and push them here. So once I upload them, what I'm actually going to do is um, change it to where we're no longer relying on Django static files in the way that we have them set up. So what's happening here is if I go into my project here, let's go ahead and turn on our server. So we'll just go ahead and start that. Let's 
So if I turn on my server and go to this account now, and right now we currently don't have a profile picture because there's no path to it. But if we just go in and upload um, some random image here, let's go ahead and just grab something like this and submit that. Based on the configuration we're seeing here and the bucket that we're working with and how we set everything up, now Django is not gonna send our image. So there's an image and no longer sends it here anymore. So you're not gonna see that image. It's actually sending it to our bucket. So if we look at the path and you see this, it's actually on AWS S3. So if we now open up our bucket and refresh, we'll actually see the image appear here. So we need to configure it later to actually go into this images folder, but that image was directly uploaded to our bucket. And based on what we did here, Django now knows to serve it. So the last thing I wanna do in this video um, is actually gonna be to change up all of our static files. So if I go to this logo, this is actually still being served locally. And if I actually go into, just to give you a better example, I'll go into the master user. Django is still prioritizing these static files over the ones in our S3 bucket. So we have this logo in our S3 bucket, but right now Django is still prioritizing that localized one. So what I wanna do is add one more thing in right here, one more parameter that's actually gonna tell us to look into those S3 buckets first. So let's go ahead and open up Amazon S3 or the storages and find that. So it wasn't in default storages, but it was in static file storage. So this should override it. So if I go ahead and throw that in here, but before I do that, I am actually gonna remove all of those static files. So I'll show you what's gonna happen. So if I go ahead and open this up and let's just say I'm gonna move this out here. So it's gonna be outside of our project. So I'll put those back in when I put up the source code. If I look in the static, we have nothing here and that's uncommented. So if I open up the project, my static files include JavaScript, CSS, and images. So if I go ahead and refresh that, and that should stop serving them in a second. Okay, so all of that just broke and that static CSS isn't working. But once I go ahead and throw that in into static file storage is right here, what's gonna happen now is this, this project is gonna look up into AWS S3 buckets. So those are actually if I go ahead and look in here, we actually have all of that CSS right here and that logo. So now if I refresh it, because we added this, we can now have those being served from there. So let's go ahead and test this. Okay, so now if I look into this logo, if I look at that URL path, that's now being served from the S3 bucket. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we're actually gonna start putting this up on our server. So I'm actually gonna start with a completely blank project and throw that up on a Heroku server and then we'll finish it up with throwing this site up there. So I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible.